So today we're going to be talking about homeostasis. So homeostasis uh, is a way for the body to keep equilibrium. So it's a condition of equilibrium in the body, in the internal environment, uh, due to constant interactions of different regulatory processes. Uh, so basically it's going to keep the body its internal environment. So keep the body's internal environment uh, within normal limits. And it does this uh, through uh, different ways. What we're going to talk about first is the control of homeostasis. So when we are controlling homeostasis, we're actually going to be talking about mainly two systems. So we're going to talk about our nervous system and how that controls it. Generally, that's through nerve impulses. So nerve impulses, uh, action potentials, and we're going to talk a lot more about that when we get to the nervous system uh, as well as the muscular system and things like that. And then the second system that we look at for control is our endocrine system. And so the endocrine system, when we're talking about the endocrine system, we're really talking about hormones. Uh, so those are the two ways that we generally control homeostasis is through our nervous system and through the endocrine system. And we do this uh, through feedback systems. And we're going to take a closer look at the feedback systems. There are actually two types of feedback systems. So uh, we're going to take a look at both of those. So our feedback systems are going to be our negative feedback system and our positive feedback system. Uh, we're going to take a look at each of those, but first let's, let's take a look at uh, the feedback systems themselves. So a feedback system is a, a cycle of events, and then this is where we're going to be monitoring the status of the body condition. Uh, we'll evaluate it, and then we'll change it. Uh, so there is an evaluation, so we're, let's say we're monitoring something. Let's say we're monitoring body temperature, for example. So we're monitoring body temperature, and then we're going to evaluate that. So it's evaluated uh, whether or not it has changed. So we can do that again um, in, in various different ways. We're going to look at different uh, stimulus or stimuli, whoops, stimuli uh, as related to evaluating that. So we have different stimulus that are going to uh, cause changes in the body system. We have ways that we're going to pick those up. Uh, and then we'll change that. So the feedback system is going to change it. So for example, or this example with the body temperature, if we have an increase in body temperature, then we're going to change it to decrease that body temperature to get it back into a system or an area where we're happy with it. So we have what are con called <coughs> controlled conditions. So a controlled condition is a monitored variable. So this is the variable that we are monitoring. Uh, so we just mentioned up here when we were monitoring something, say body temperature, for example. So we have body temperature, uh, could be blood glucose, uh, could be levels of oxygen in the blood, could be levels of carbon dioxide in the blood. Uh, so we're looking at different variables here. And this is our controlled condition. We wanna make sure that these conditions are going to stay within certain parameters, um, like pH, for example. We don't want our body to get too acidic. We don't want our body to get too alkaline. Uh, so we have these different variables that our body is constantly taking a look at constantly monitoring. So these are our controlled conditions. And then as I mentioned, uh, we have a stimulus. And the stimulus is any disruption in that. So that's going to change our controlled condition. So our stimulus is what's going to change the controlled condition. And then our feedback system, the next part of our feedback system, we have our controlled condition, um, which is our variable. We have our stimulus. And then we have our receptor. So our control condition is our variable, something we're monitoring, let's say body temperature, that's a pretty easy one to understand. So body temperature, then a stimulus is going to be something that changes that. Let's say we walk outside and it's winter. So we walk outside and it's winter time. So our body senses the cold. Then we have our receptor. So our receptor is something that's going to monitor changes in the conditions and it sends that input to the control center. So our receptor here would be our temperature sensors. 
in our skin, for example. Uh, so these are receptors. They pick up on the stimulus, which can be exterior uh, from the body or outside of the body. Then that receptor is going to monitor that change and send input to the control center. So the next part is our control center. And our control center is going to evaluate that input. Uh, so this is going to evaluate that. It's saying, okay, is the cold that we are experiencing now, is it within an acceptable range or is it not within an acceptable range? And then once it evaluates that, if it says, well, we're just a little bit chilly, like if it's a cool fall day or something or just a spring day, we step outside, we're like, ooh, I noticed a difference in the temperature. Our receptors picked up on that. They sent it to our control center, which might be the brain in this example. Uh, the control center in the brain, the brain says, uh, not too much, not too cold, it's okay, and we, we don't do anything to change it. Uh, if it's really, really cold, maybe then our control center, our brain, is going to say there's something needs to be done about this. Uh, so if something needs to be done, we're going to send output. <clears throat> that output then is going to go to our effector. So the effector is a particular body structure that receives that output and then produces the response uh, or effect that changes the condition. <clears throat> so this is where we get uh, the output is going to go to our effector. So remember the receptor sent the, that was the input to our control center. Then the control center sends the output to the effector. This is our body structure that is going to receive that output and then produce a response. Uh, so let's say... We're talking about body temperature. We walk outside. It's cold, it's, you know, because it's winter. Our temperature sensors pick up on that. They recognize that it's cold. It sends that message, our input, to our control center, our brain. Our brain says, yes, it is too cold. We're going to have to do something about this. It sends that output to an effector. Uh, and let's say for general purposes, the effector here are going to be the muscles in the body. So we send that message out to the muscles, and what do the muscles do? They shiver or they shake, uh, which is a shivering because we're cold. So this is our feedback system or the different parts of our feedback system. Uh, so we have our controlled condition again, so whatever it is that we're monitoring, our variable. And we have our stimulus, which is what's going to cause that change, um, any disruption uh, in our monitored condition or our variable. Then our receptor is what's picking up on that stimulus. Then that sends input uh, to our control center, which makes a decision about it, so it evaluates that information. And then it sends output to the effector. And then the effector is going to follow through with whatever change needs to happen. So I mentioned that there are two different types <coughs> of feedback systems. So let's take a moment to talk about the two different types, and then we'll look even more detail uh, in even more detail about these systems. So I mentioned we have a negative feedback system. And in a negative feedback system, this is where we're going to reverse. We're going to reverse a change in the controlled condition. So reverse a change in the controlled condition. So in this case, what we're doing is, uh, for example, the body temperature, we were at a comfortable temperature, we step outside, our stimulus, it's cold, and that causes an interaction here. We've got the receptor, the control center, the effector. That's a negative feedback system. We're going to try to bring our body temperature back to where it wants to be. Uh, so we're returning the condition to normal. And this is the most used feedback system. So we're typically talking about negative feedback systems when we're talking about the different body systems. Uh, so you can think like body temperature, as we've been talking about, or blood glucose. If we've got a lot of glucose in the blood, uh, say we just ate a big meal with lots of glucose, we inundate our body with lots of glucose. So then what our body is going to do, it picks up on that information. It's going to then uh, get rid of the glucose by various means and get it back to a normal blood glucose level. Uh, blood pressure is the same way. We increase our blood pressure, uh, various things. We're talking about negative feedback systems most often. And then the other type of feedback system is our positive feedback system. system. So our positive feedback.
feedback system. In our positive feedback system, this is going to reinforce a change. So we are reinforcing a change in this situation, so it's positive. We're giving it positive feedback. We're, we're increasing something. We're making it continue. Uh, so then in a positive feedback system, we're going to continue until that's been interrupted. Uh, and then that is going to return it back to homeostasis. So this is not very common. Um, there are a couple of major positive feedback systems that are in the body. Uh, for example, one of the positive feedback systems is if uh, we, let's say we have a, a blood vessel break, for example. Uh, so we've got our blood vessel here and we get a tear in the blood vessel. As that's happening, our blood is moving through here. Then we're going to have platelets come, and platelets are going to stick in here. We'll talk all about this throughout the semester. Um, but our platelets act as little clotting guys. They, they stick to the area when they see damage. Then they send out chemical messengers. Uh, when they send out little chemicals, what that does is it attracts more platelets to the area. So then these platelets are going to come. So in this case, there's been a tear. That's the disruption. Uh, so the, the stimulus here, the disruption, is there's a, a tear in the blood vessel. And then in this case, the receptor. We've got different receptors going on here. We'll talk about more when we get to the cardiovascular system. Um, but we, we pick up on that. Our body recognizes that there's a tear, uh, sends the information. Our effector is going to then go back. We're going to send our platelets here. Our platelets are going to stick. Then they're going to send information out uh, to attract more platelets. Then those platelets come. And then when those platelets come, they send out chemical messengers to make more platelets come. Those come, they send out more. So we're seeing that this is a positive feedback system. So we're, we're not trying to, we eventually return it to normal once we've got all these platelets in here and, and various other things happen and we form a clot. And then once we form that clot, that's when we get back to the end here. That's when we see the end um, here. So we're, we're reinforcing this change. The change is that we are sending platelets, and when we reinforce that, the platelets are then attracting more platelets, attracting more platelets, and then we have the clot form. And then once we have the clot form, then that has been interrupted. That system is interrupted, and we are now back to homeostasis. We don't have blood loss anymore, and the positive feedback system is over. Another good example of a positive feedback system is childbirth. So the, the fetus is starting to come out, the baby is starting to come out. That's going to cause contractions in the uterus. And then those contractions are going to push the baby even further down the birth canal. And then as it goes further down, it's going to cause more contractions, send out more messages, and then we'll increase the contractions even more. Then the baby is, is continuously moving down, and then that sends out more messages. The stretch receptors send out more messages saying more contractions, we have more contractions, and then that keeps going. This positive feedback, it, it keeps going and keeps going until then the baby is born. And then once the baby is born, then it's over. There isn't any more information being sent to those stretch receptors. And since there isn't any more information being sent to those stretch receptors, uh, then it's over, it's been interrupted. And then that positive feedback system is over. So those are a couple examples of positive feedback system. I would like to take a, a even closer look at our negative feedback system very quickly. So if we can imagine that we have our variable, right? This is our variable here, our controlled variable. And uh, let's just say this is kind of like a teeter-totter here. So we have our variable that we're keeping in balance, right? So we're trying to, to keep it nice and balanced here. Uh, let's say blood temperature or um, body temperature again. So we keep our variable and it's in homeostasis. Uh, homeostasis means that it is in that region that we want it to be in. So if it's in the region that we want it to be in, uh, there's this constant monitoring, evaluating, and nothing needs to be changed. However, if we get into a situation now um, where it is no longer in an acceptable area, no longer in the region that we want it to be, then we're going to have to take a, a look at things and change things up. So let's put this at the bottom here. We have our variable, and let's say it tips. Right, so we have our variable, it tips, it's, it's no longer balanced on our, our little uh, guy there. So if it is an imbalance, remember before it used to be straight on here, 
Now it's imbalanced. Let's take a look at this imbalance here. Let's say this is body temperature and our body temperature has increased. So there was some sort of stimulus here. And the stimulus made our body temperature increase. So now our variable has been changed, it's imbalanced. So that change then is detected by a receptor. So the change is detected by a receptor. When the change is detected by our receptor, so this is our, our sensor here, Then that's going to have information that's going to be sent. Remember, it has the input. It's going to send that input. And where is it going to send that input? It's going to send that input to the control center. Send that input to the control center. Remember, the control center then is going to evaluate that information. It's going to decide whether or not something needs to be done about that. If something does need to be done, then the control center sends its output. And that output is going to go where? Where are we sending that output? Right, we're sending that output to the effector. So we send the output, the information is sent along a pathway to the effector, and then the effector is going to then get us back into balance here. So hopefully it's going to allow us to <clears throat> take our variable and we're going to put that back where it needs to be. So then we're going to be back into this position here in homeostasis. So homeostasis. And this is our negative feedback loop here. Okay, so our receptor, which is our sensor here, uh, sends input to the control center, the control center sends output to the effector, and then we get ourselves back into homeostasis. Uh, so in an example here, right, so if our variable is our body temperature, uh, you can think of it as uh, the thermostat in a house. So if our variable is our, our temperature, maybe not body temperature in this case, um, but if we're talking about a house, this is the, the temperature in the house. Then we have an imbalance, let's say rising room temperature here. So our, our room temperature increases here um, from some stimulus. Say it gets very, very sunny outside. The sun is you know shining on the house, increases then our receptor here would be like the thermostat. So our thermostat, our receptor, the sensor, is going to pick up on that information. It's going to send that information then to the control center. I guess in this case, the, the thermostat would be like the thermometer in the thermostat. So the, the thermometer in the thermostat. Then the thermometer in the thermostat will send the information to the thermostat, the actual computing information, computer region. Uh, so the thermostat, then the thermostat is going to send output to the effector. So then the effector would then be like the heater in the house. So it's going to stop sending heat out. Once it stops sending heat out, then it's going to change and the temperature is no longer going to be high. It's going to bring that temperature down. Then of course we could say the opposite as well. So if we're using the same example, uh, the temperature of the room or the temperature of the house, let's say it decreases, we're over here now, if we have a decrease in the temperature of the house, say it's nighttime now, uh, the temperature drops outside, uh, now we have a decrease in temperature of the house, that's going to be picked up by our receptor. So again, our thermostat, <laughs> once we pick that up and our, our thermometer of our thermostat picks that up, it's going to send that input, that information, the temperature is now lower, to our control center, the thermostat, the actual computing part in the thermostat. Uh, then that computing part is going to send its output to the effector. And the effector is the heater. And then the heater, in this case, we're going to increase the heater or turn the heater on in order to bring ourselves back into homeostasis. So again, this is our negative feedback system or negative feedback loop, uh, which is different than our positive feedback loop. <coughs> our positive feedback loop is a lot less common than our negative feedback loop. And so this is our, our overall feedback uh, system. So we're talking about homeostasis. We want to keep the body in its uh, happy internal environment within its normal limits. And we have these various pieces to our feedback systems. And then we have our negative and positive feedback system. We talked about the two examples of our positive feedback system. So for example, um, a, a tear in a vessel, uh, which would lead to clotting and then also childbirth. 
So two examples of our positive feedback system, and then we can mostly witness our negative feedback system uh, in our bodies. So for example, body temperature, body glucose, um, CO2 levels, O2 levels, uh, things like that that we see in our body. So that is homeostasis uh, in a nutshell here, uh, given our, our two different types of feedback systems.